The Guided Goals podcast gives you the tools, direction, and resources you need to pursue your passion project. I'm Deborah Eckerling, Project Catalyst, and this is the Guided Goals podcast. Our guest today is Dave Johnson, and we're going to talk about building your passion project. Dave is the tech editorial director at eHow and the editor-in-chief of a brand new site that just launched called techwalla.com. Dave, welcome. Hi. Hi, Deb. How's it going? Good. How are you doing? Uh, I'm doing great because, as you just alluded to, we launched TechWalla yesterday. Uh, so we've been developing for the last four months or five months, and um, it's finally live to the world. We had our launch party yesterday, so I'm very happy. And and so I probably either picked the best day or the worst day to talk to you about your project, right? Let's go with this is a very good day right now. Okay, I, I like that. Let's go with that. So why don't you share a little bit more about your background and how TechWalla got started? And, sure. and so, also also what TechWalla is. That's probably helpful, too. That's a really, yes, that's a, that would be a good thing to say. So I'm a longtime tech journalist. I've written a bunch of tech and photography books. Um, I used to be a full-time freelance writer. And then I did a stint at Microsoft writing content for a few years. And um, the last couple of years, I've been working at Demand Media as an editorial director for uh, the Tech Channel and a few other things. And uh, a few months ago, I thought it would be a great idea to build a brand new site, which came to be known as TechWalla. And the basic idea is I was pitching it to people saying, just imagine it's like Rotten Tomatoes, because everybody knows what Rotten Tomatoes is, uh, for uh, tech gadget product reviews. So you'd be able to go to one website and say, look up the iPhone 6S, and you would see a meta score, which is the average of all of the scores out there in the world, and little snippets, pull quotes from all the reviews on the internet so you get to see in one snapshot what everybody thinks about this one product and I thought it would make it easier to comparison shop and and things like that and uh, so the site does a few other things but that's kind of the core idea and we spent the last few months launching it and as opposed to I guess who I think my core audience is which is people who have day jobs who are launching their passion project on the side you actually got to launch your passion project at work so that's pretty, that you, is pretty cool. amazing. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's almost hard to believe, but uh, you know, I had talked to the CEO and a few other executives, and they were really enthusiastic about it. They thought it was a genuinely good idea, and you know, it, it, the, probably uh, the, the laws of the universe are stacked against this happening. But they actually gave me some resources, some engineers and a designer and some other folks, and said, "Just go make it happen." Okay, so you're like five steps beyond like the regular person who says, okay, my job's okay, or I like my job, or I hate my job, but I have this fabulous idea and I have to do it anyway. So what sorts of things did you do to get your project rolling that, oh, say the person who's the one-man band can do uh, to get it rolling on? So so how would... Well, yeah. yeah, I think there's really two ways to tackle it, right? Because... I could have kept this idea to myself, and, and granted, I, I thought about doing this, trying to launch it on my own. But there's a lot of risk associated with doing a project like that yourself. If you want to go down the road that I did, honestly, you could do what I did, which is, you know, pitch it. And if you work at the appropriate kind of company where they're amenable to those kinds of ideas, like, you know, essentially, you know, hackathons and, and you know, self-starting things within the business, um, you just have to learn kind of like the ABCs of doing elevator pitches and honing a presentation and doing some, you know, market research yourself so you can make a convincing presentation. And you never know, you could get lucky like me and get to launch the site. Otherwise, if you want to do it yourself, then I know actually a couple of people at work um, that I work with who are doing that sort of thing on their own. And they are looking for friends and associates who have spare time that they can help develop the website or develop the app that they want to do. And it's essentially the same thing, except you're putting together a team of people that can only give you 
part of their time, like a Saturday afternoons, evenings, that sort of thing. And they're doing it as a passion project outside of their, their work hours. I think both are perfectly cromulent ways of tackling the project. Um, the way I did it, of course, um, you know, I have essentially let my business, let Demand Media own the site. And in return for that, I got to actually build it myself at a very low risk. Whereas on the other hand, you're going to probably have to pay some people and it's going to take a longer amount of time because you have limited bandwidth to do it. Okay, so let, let's go back to like the starting point. You have this great idea, now what? Do you write it out? Do you write your pitch? Which, which part of the process comes first? Or came for, so, in your case, came first? Right, so I've had this, this kind of hip pocket idea for a while. I, I thought for some, probably a year, I've been thinking, I'd love to build a site like this, and I had some very specific ideas around it. So what I did is I turned it into a deck. And anyone who works in any business in the world probably knows that you know business leaders live and die by a PowerPoint presentation. And the more persuasive you can make that PowerPoint presentation, the better off you are. You can have a great idea and write it on a one-page Word doc. It's not nearly as good as a 10 slide PowerPoint deck. And so, you know, um, basically it's, it's building a, a great deck that serves as an elevator pitch. And it's really important to have some competitive analysis. Um, and, you know, when we talk about competitive analysis and, uh, you know, market surveys and things like that, it doesn't have to be, uh, uh, you know, super in depth where you have to pay money for people to go do research. It's amazing the amount of data you can collect just looking online. And that is essentially what I did. I did a very guerrilla approach to market research. I got enough numbers that I could tell a persuasive story. And it's really all about that. It's about telling your story and persuading people to be interested in what you're pitching. Okay, so the, the steps are the same, whether you're pitching it to your business or you're pitching it to friends to say, hey, I've got this great idea, you wanna get on board. You need some sort of fun document with legitimate information to get people on board. Yeah, and you know, this sometimes comes down to personality. I have a certain preference for how I approach this kind of thing. Some people will make a PowerPoint deck and, and litter it with cute little visuals, you know, pictures, memes from the internet, and, and that's and I've actually seen that happen. I don't like that approach very much because it seems borderline unprofessional. So I like to keep it short and sweet. The, the, each slide is very simple with three bullet points on it, a minimum of information. When there's data, like how many people buy consumer electronics every year, or what percentage of people do research online while they're actually in a store making a purchase. These are the kinds of questions I tried to answer when I was doing background research on TechWalla. All that info was out there for free online, and I turned it into little infographic blurbs on individual slides. So it's easy to digest and it looks kind of clean and professional. Great, so you got the go ahead and then you put your team together and then you've just been working like a mad person for like four months to get it live. I've been doing several different roles because in addition to being the editorial lead for the site, um, I was also the overall project lead and I was, uh, um, essentially a product manager, a PM on the project as well. So I was, I was wearing three or four different hats. I'm also now, um, and for the last few months, I've been building the go-to-market strategy. So I'm the marketing guy as well, and partly SEO guy. So I've been doing all of these things, and if, if you're going to lead, a, or if you, if you have an idea like that and you're trying to bring it to market, you're probably going to be wearing all those hats yourself. You know, I didn't get to hire 30 people and build an organization. Most of the work I had to do myself, and it's a lot of fun, it's exhausting, but um, you know, you learn a lot along the way because you have to, because I don't have a marketing degree. So I've had to kind of teach myself and talk to people and figure out what are the things I need to know to make this a success. So the internet is your friend in many, many ways as well. Yes, and people in your network that, you know, I. 
I know you, Deb, you're always talking about networks and you probably have the biggest network of, of anyone I've ever met. Um, however, you know, even my tiny little network had enough people in it with expertise on the various things that I needed to know that I could just pick different people's brains, take somebody out to lunch, you know, chat with them before work. And, you know, I learned enough that I could, if not be a marketing person, I can play one on TV now. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. So how did you keep track of everything? Did you have certain tools you liked or websites? Yeah, um, you know, I have uh, uh, actually Trello. Trello.com is my go-to tool for keeping track of the project. And I, I know that real project managers have very sophisticated tools and they track everything in JIRA tickets and, and other kinds of systems like that. For me, I wanted something simple and understandable and uh, something that I could access no matter what device I was on, my home computer, or my work computer, my iPad. So Trello is my favorite thing on earth right now. I think I like Trello better than chocolate cake. Um, it's a really wow, simple project. A statement. <laughs> yeah. You can basically create categories and put to do in each one and drag them around to prioritize them and when they're done you just check them off and you can build checklists and stuff it's it's a really powerful tool and so I've structured my Trello board so that I have one for the development of the product one for marketing one for editorial um, I have an urgent column for things no matter what category they would ordinarily belong to if it's something that I had to do today I dragged it into there so I highly recommend that Okay, and you you should. So I will mention that Trello. There's a there's a pro version, but it is free, so anyone can go use Trello. I, yes, absolutely. And, and I've used very high end, very low end, medium. I've used a bunch of different project management systems. I, you know, my favorite is kind of the Excel spreadsheet, but shh, don't tell anybody. But it's uh, it's really, um, and Trello is a great free tool, but. Anyone who needs some sort of system, I think the big thing is trial and error. Check out a bunch of different ones, and then the one that you actually respond to, the one that helps you the best, that's the that's what I think is the, the differentiator. Yeah, and you know, it's funny, you mentioned Excel, and certainly Excel is the poor man's Trello, even though Excel costs money and Trello is free. So I don't think that, that, that analogy doesn't make sense, but nonetheless, um, I'll point out that I've all but given up on Excel and Word now because this project actually made me a Google Docs believer um, because Google Docs it's so easy to share and collaborate. Um, I had at the start of the project back in April, I started doing things in Excel and it became very hard to make that Excel doc available to everybody and editable and so on. So I transitioned to Sheets in Google Docs and now I am just I just do everything there. I have some Google Docs folders that are shared with all the people that are on the project and some stuff that's shared with my freelance contributors Contributors who are writing and editing on this site, and it's a perfect solution. So um, I, I'm a big believer in Google Docs as well now. What mistakes do people make when they're starting a project like this? I mean, I'm sure you didn't make any, but no, no, actually, it was flawless in in a way that that would impress you. Um, however, for the sake of argument, let's pretend that I made some mistakes. Okay, and I I think that. One thing that I can't emphasize enough, and this is specific, I'm gonna give some, uh, some guidance that's specific to building something like a website. Um, and I'm sure this applies to other areas as well, but I'm gonna say really think it through. Uh, actually, it's like the old, the old adage that my dad used to say. What is it like, uh, measure twice, cut once? That, that basic idea. Yeah. Um, you would think maybe that doesn't apply so much to something like building a website. But I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to have a good, great design that you have like designed the heck out of your site before the first developer sits down to start writing code. Um, and I know that's not all the way, always the way it's done. Often, you know, developers will sit down and start banging out something based on something you drew on a napkin. And in fact, that's kind of how we started Techwalla. And we lost some momentum because we got about a month in and we didn't like the designs. 
And we said, no, we need to take a step back and really take a good hard look at the design. So we designed everything a second time. And I'm super proud of what we have now. And it's because we did a reset in the middle and kind of like redesigned everything from scratch and then went a second time. So, and I, you know, that, that applies to whether you're doing a book outline or, um, I don't know, building something where you cut wood, I guess. Um, you know, just the literal one, actually yeah. you know, keep super deliberate up front about making sure you've planned it out well enough that when you actually start cutting the metaphorical or actual wood, you don't kind of have to start over in the middle. That, that's wonderful. And, and we'll get to it in a minute, but I know, I now know what assignment we're going to give our listeners at the end of the podcast. But, but first, I just want to touch on a second. Work-life balance, so important, especially when you're working on a project that runs your life in addition to your day job and considering how many hats you wore in in developing TechWala, I think that it, it was kind of an all-in-one for you. So what did you do to maintain uh, balance in your life? It's kind of hoping you wouldn't ask this. Um, my work-life balance was probably a little too far on the work side and not enough on the life side. But the, the nice thing is that I actually genuinely enjoyed, there were parts of the project that were like the project management parts that was hard work. But there was a content side, there was an editorial side to the project where we had to write the content. For me, that is therapeutic. I enjoy writing. And so I could save those parts of TechWalla, like creating product reviews and writing the, the, the footer content, like about us and, you know, the, those kinds of feature articles that appear on the site. Um, I saved that stuff for the weekends. So on the weekends, I got to kind of unwind by writing. I was still working on TechWalla, but it was a part of the site that I found very relaxing. So... Um, Aside from that, I kind of worked all the time, except when I wasn't sleeping. So if you ever figure out what the right way to do that work-life balance is, I would love to know about it. Okay, you that was a really good way of cheating your way around the question. And I'm going <laughs> to, I will let it pass for this reason and this reason only. It's because of what I do. I'm Project Catalyst. I help people with their projects. I have my book that I wrote, and I've got this new podcast as well and so, but it's the same thing i like to save my weekends for the parts that are i want, wouldn't want to say more fun but like i like to keep my clients during the week and my fun parts during the weekends so for these reasons you get a pass on cheating on that question but remember when we have you back here to talk about another topic i will ask the question again so that will, that will I, force you. I don't feel like I cheated because you just agreed that you use the same strategy. So I think I win. Anyway, I, <laughs> this, has been, this has been great and very, very insightful. And like I said, before we go, I, I like to give our listeners an assignment. And I think based on, on your advice, I think our listeners – Go take a half an hour, take an hour, take a piece of paper and a pen, and basically just sketch out your idea for your passion project. And then when you're done, do another sketch, and maybe a third, just to get a couple different ideas out there and out of your head and onto some, some paper. What do you think, Dave? I think that's great, and if I may make yes. an additional suggestion, yes. that is after you've done, say, your second or third draft on that, Show it to someone else who is not like a significant other, not a wife or a husband or a son, but someone who's a little more removed and get their honest feedback. And that is the kind of collaboration that really helps spark those aha ideas where like a whole new nodule of your idea can take shape that you hadn't even been thinking about when you started. Okay. I, I think so we don't need a professional and a personal goal because we got a two-parter goal here go do a fun design of your passion project and then show it to someone who's objective who can give you honest feedback and the thing that I will add to that is make sure you like what you're showing before you show it so you can take the feedback in an as objective way as possible any final words of wisdom Dave 
Uh, no, I, I would simply say enjoy what you do because if you go down the road of creating a project like this and you're lucky enough to either green light it yourself in some way or get somebody else to say, I'll help you do it, you really better like it because you're going to be living with it for a while. Do what you love, love what you do, and make it your life. Pretty much? Exactly. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for joining. And to those listening, go out and, and make some progress and live the life you want.